So I've had my griddle here for about eight months now and I have made a lot of mistakes. But I prefer the Bob Ross approach so I don't call them mistakes, I call them happy accidents. In this video I'm going to tell you my top 10 happy accidents so that you can learn from them and make better meals on your griddle. Cheers. Number 10 is melting bottles and plastic on the side here. Uh, the heat comes out and it gets really, really hot. I mean, there's four burners in here, it makes sense. I feel like an idiot saying it out loud. But you're gonna melt plastic bottles. Even after I tell you this, you probably will still melt them. Buy a bunch, they're cheap. But I also would have like little uh, gladware that I'd put out here for like scrambled eggs and I'd get them too close. Those will melt too. So. Try not to put anything too close to the side that's going to melt because it does put out a lot of heat. Number nine is not pressing your smash burgers down enough, thin enough. I mean, you bought a griddle to make smash burgers and breakfast and you really got to like press them down thin, thin, thin to get the real smash burger crust and have it cook in its own fat. So make sure it doesn't matter if you have a weight or not, you can use two spatulas but you just got to press it down as thin as you possibly can to get that nice smash burger you're looking for. Number eight is zone cooking. So you gotta think here, you got one, two, three, four burners and they don't all need to be on the same temperature. So you can keep this lower for your eggs and keep this higher for your pancakes and bacon. So make sure you utilize the four burners cause you know, I've just had them all on high and not high cause high is too, too much. I've just had them all on the same temperature like medium cooking bacon when I could be cooking bacon on one side and eggs on another or if you want to sear a steak so you could have it at like 450 right here to sear your steak but you could have it at like 375 here to cook your potatoes and let's say asparagus for a vegetable so utilize zone cooking I didn't really do that much at first you just got to get yourself a hard cut or soft cover to keep the rain away from the griddle because it's just gonna start rusting and it's going to ruin your flat top and then you're going to have to sand it all down and start over. It won't ruin it for good, you can always just re-season it, but I highly recommend getting yourself a cover for your griddle. Number six is worrying about what type of oil to use. I was so worried at first, there's so many opinions online and you can just, you can cook and season with vegetable oil or olive oil that you normally use. People say you got to use grapeseed because it has a higher burning point. All, or avocado oil is healthier or use lard or Crisco it just whatever you want if you want to buy a seasoning from one of the Camp Chef or Blackstone's pre seasonings that they have go ahead and buy that but don't worry about the oil just just use the vegetable oil or canola oil in your fridge and start cooking number five is preheating your griddle on high do not I repeat do not preheat it on high you get something new you want to crank it up like it's a brand new car and you're just like I'm gonna throttle this thing all the way to the top and do not do that it says right in the can chef, camp chef manual it probably says it in the Blackstone manual I don't own one but you do not preheat your griddle on high start it on medium low check your temperature if you do it on high a you're gonna get to a temperature that is not even able to cook food at these things will get above 500 which is not really useful for anything and B, you might warp your griddle, like your brand new griddle, which is really the only thing that you can ruin it. If you get rust, you can sand it off and then re-season. If you warp it, you better call the company and see if they'll send you a new flat top. Number four is getting all of your prep ready before you get out to the griddle. If your griddle's outside and all of your food is inside, then you want to get everything ready. I have little ramekins I bought that are plastic that I put stuff in. I also have little glass bowls that I put stuff in and you just want it all ready double triple check your list before you go outside you don't want to have you know rice and shrimp and steak on for hibachi and then you think oh shoot you know i didn't grab the sesame oil you know like that's too late like <laughs> you're already out there and you're yelling for your wife like go grab the sesame oil and uh you know that's not good for a marriage so uh make sure you have all your prep done is what i'm saying you could buy a tray, some people buy them. I just use a sheet pan like a cookie pan, but if you want to buy a tray, knock yourself out, buy yourself a tray. Number three is cooking food in the wrong order. You need to kind of learn how you're gonna cook your food. Like at breakfast, for example, when I was a grill cook or at Bob Evans, you always want to put your meat down first and then your potatoes 
and then you'd follow that up with your pancakes and your eggs. Your eggs are last because they're going to get cold. And actually your toast is last, but you don't have a toaster outside. But you can put toast on the griddle, put a piece of bread down, let it toast up. Uh, you still would want to do that last with the eggs. If you do the eggs first, and then you turn around and your over easy eggs are done and your bacon's like still limp and not done, then by the time your bacon's done, those over easy eggs are gonna be over hard eggs and you're gonna start over. So make sure you do it in order. General rule of thumb, your meat's going down first, then your potatoes, then your veggie or eggs if you have eggs. Veggies cook just as quick as eggs. They're really, they cook up in a snap on those things. Number two is touching your food too much, specifically potatoes. Uh, I touch my hash browns and my potatoes a lot. You have a griddle, you kind of see those people like the steakhouse, the hibachi, and you just want to like get your spatulas and just keep swimming everything around and lifting it up, but you're not going to get the brown crust you want on your potatoes. Also the same with steak. You don't want to keep moving your steak. You don't want to keep moving your smash burgers. You want them to be on that flat surface getting the sear at the high temperature. Well, the steak and the smash burgers are high. Your potatoes are around 375. They're not quite as high. But still, if you want your potatoes to be brown and crunchy, you just leave them alone. You gotta leave them alone. I like to put a weight on them as well. That's a different video. I'll link it in the cards right now. But you just gotta leave them alone. Same thing with your steak. You put your steak on there, you put your smash burger down, and you just gotta leave it alone and let the griddle do its magic of cooking on that flat surface. So don't touch everything too much except when you're mixing your fried rice. Then you can pretend, you know, that you work at a Japanese steakhouse and flip shrimps into people's mouths and whatever you like to do on the weekend. The number one mistake or happy accident, sorry, happy accident that I made on the griddle and I know a lot of people make is not controlling the temperature. I started cooking by the settings, oh, low, medium, high. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't tell you anything. There's, there's, two variables of cooking, time and temperature. Low is not a temperature. Low on my camp chef in Columbus, Ohio, in the middle of June right now, is different than low on your Blackstone in upstate New York in October. Two different things, you have no idea. You need to know what your temperature is. I have an infrared thermometer and I have a surface thermometer. Is that excessive? Probably. I don't know, but I have a YouTube channel about cooking on the griddle, so it's worth it to me. I'll link both in the description. You don't have to use the link. Just go to the hardware store and get yourself an infrared thermometer. If I was getting one, I'd get the infrared thermometer, and I'd understand my cooking temperatures to make sure I'm cooking stuff at the right temperature that it needs to be cooked at. If you do go to the hardware store, though, also understand there's like don't spend more than 30 bucks. This is what's gonna take your cooking to the next level. This is where a lot of your problems will lie. If you're burning your eggs, if your pancakes are done on the outside but running on the inside, if you're not getting the sear you want on your steaks, or if just everything cooks too fast, you gotta know your temperature. And I did not at first, and I burnt a lot of stuff, and I was playing a lot of moving the knobs around after I start, after the beginning. Now I have a better idea of where I put my griddle at when I wanna come out and just cook a plain meal, whether that's fried rice or breakfast or whatever. So thank you so much for watching. Have a good one and keep on griddling.